In my four months in Tasmania, I've had a crash course in the agrarian way. Chickens now wake me in the morning, and my piglets grow fatter by the day. There we are. Life on the farm is pretty sweet. Mm. Yeah, nice. It's death that I'm not looking forward to. My name is Matthew Evans. I was Sydney's most feared food critic. Now, I've given up city life and moved here to country Tasmania. I've always dreamed of producing my own food so I can know and trust what I eat. The only problem is, I don't know how to chop wood. I don't know anything about growing plants. And I have absolutely no idea about rearing animals. But I do know how to eat. Everything else I'll have to learn from scratch. How hard can it be? I'm getting used to the routine of looking after animals on the farm. My pigs and chooks are keeping me busy, and I'm in no hurry to add to the menagerie. Although... Everyone's always got something to, uh, to sell around here, and um, there's always like pigs or lambs or a couple of cows, and, and they've actually got young turkeys. Hmm, turkeys. I heard that homegrown turkeys are brilliant to eat and they're low maintenance because you don't need to build them a shelter. They'll find a roost for themselves. Perfect for an impulse buy. But I should know by now that nothing to do with farming is that simple. What I didn't know is that the first night you've actually got to keep them locked up, otherwise they'll run away. They'll try to get back to where they were born. I'm hoping this makeshift fence will hold them for the night. Whether they can fly over the top is another matter. I bet they can. This could be the last we see of these turkeys. Okay. Get some food. Have a drink. Don't fly away. Bye bye. One of them's flown up on top of the roof where they'll be able to see freedom over the fence. I think they're about to leap from their cage. Oh, that way. I don't think so. Why don't you come down here? If I can't tempt them down with food, perhaps I can wait them out. But something tells me they've got other ideas. And sure enough, three hours later, they're still awake and looking to the horizon. Presumably, they're going to need to roost soon, so don't want to stay somewhere safe. And I'm hoping it's there on the roof overnight and not somewhere up in the trees where I never see them again. Just as I feared, they've flown the coop. But as luck has it, they haven't gone far. Look at this. They're all still here. When I went to bed last night, they're all through the trees and on the roof. Get up this morning, they're all hanging around the pen. Might become a turkey farmer in one night. But turkeys aren't the only new arrival on the farm. I've always liked the romanticism of an old-fashioned wood cooker. And now I've finally got the country kitchen to put it in. In theory, it'll provide a red-hot oven, a warm kitchen through winter, and steaming hot water. But first, it's got to be installed. Too easy. Yeah, it's special. <laughs> Can't believe it's in the, in the house. I've got to say, it's a bit of a nightmare. It's going to take two blokes probably four days and um, untold uh, renovations uh, in terms of the roof space of the house and cupboards and stuff to get everything sorted. But Hopefully in four days' time, I'll have a, uh, a, a wood-fired cooker, I'll have wood-fired hot water, and, um, and all this will be a distant memory. Hopefully. With all that unanticipated plumbing and construction, it's wound up costing thousands of dollars extra. So I really hope it will one day become the heart of the kitchen to justify the bloody huge outlay. Four days later, the weather is miserable, but I finally got my cooker fired up. But driving it is much more involved than just throwing in logs. 
I'm hoping Nick, my mate the cheesemaker, might have some advice for me. Good, very good. This is it. You like it? Or should I have got red? This is it. This costs Beautiful. as much as a car. <laughs> <laughs> should have got red. No, that's gorgeous. The only problem is, I can't seem to get an even heat. I reckon that's 200 there. Oh, it's about 150 down the bottom. I can boil really fast on the top and I can get the top of the oven hot. Yeah. But I can't get all this heat going all the way around. You remember Neen, who lives on Bruni? Yeah. She's yeah. got one. Her whole life is it revolves around it. Like, it's amazing. So we, we should go and have a yak with her. Yeah, I'd love to. And I'll show you what else I've got. I bought myself something for my birthday. Oh, really? Uh, apart from a uh, tea cosy. Apart from a frying wallaby tea cosy. <laughs> that was a gift. <laughs> You're a turkey farmer. <laughs> but something's not clicking between me and my turkeys. They're beginning to creep me out. They don't react. Like my chickens will tell me when they need to go to bed. They'll tell me when they're hungry, when they're thirsty, just by yeah. hanging around. So you, These just kind of You've kind of got a communication you. problem with your turkeys. Yeah. If you look yeah. at them and you lean that way, they lean the other way. <laughs> and, then, and that's that's pretty much all, all they'll do. Yeah. They're just slightly odd creatures. Sit. Oh, good girls. <laughs> but Nick might have a solution. I, th I think you should turn up to Neen's, yeah. and in exchange for a little bit of wood fire cooker advice, you cook her a turkey in it. The only problem with that is they're very much alive. And that that's a problem? Uh, yeah. I don't know how to have dispatch a, a turkey. Haven't crossed that honest. bridge yet. No. Oh, do you want me to take care of that? I'd love it if you could. I think if they're freaking you out now, then you're not the man for the job. Because they'd really freak me out, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Um, we brought the wetsuits. Do you reckon we could get a dive in? And... Yeah, let's head down the front and see if we can find some abalone. I'm off to visit Neen on Bruni Island. But in this early morning mist, I feel like an extra in the Lord of the Rings. That's just part of the charm of Tassie. So we're right down the far end of, of Bruni Island, uh, south, one of the remotest places where people live. Uh, Nick's brought the turkey and we're going to check out uh, Neen's cooker. She's going to show us how to use it. Neen's the island physiotherapist and moved her family here two years ago, giving up electricity and mains water for a sustainable lifestyle in this stunning location. Hey, guys. Hello. How are you? How are you? Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. Hi, you remember Matt? Yeah. Yes. Good How to are you see going? You good. The so I brought Matt along to have a look, yep. see your place, see how you live, because he's just got a wood-fired oven and needs some... He's still got his eel plate, so he needs some help. I need some advice. Oh, I've still got my old plates after a few years. <laughs> just because Neen is off the grid doesn't mean she has to live without power or heat. She just has to do it a different way. So these are the solar panels, nice big bank, and um, that's enough to pretty much do anything you want to do. You know, you can put the computer on if the sun's been out, and um, the kids have learnt that they can only watch movies if it's been a nice sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> can you, uh, like, run a heater or put the kettle on, have a toaster? No. Oh, you can make toast if it's been a really good day and the batch is up to 100%, but you can't really run a kettle or any sort of heating, so that's why you need wood stoves and wood cookers. So this is the active solar part of it that makes the, the power for the house, but there's also um, the passive solar side to the house. OK, so this is the glass house. Ah, smells great. Yeah, a few window veggies in. Oh, look at this. So, oh, and it's heaps warmer. Yeah, so it gets really nice and warm in here, and on a nice day like this, then you can come in and open up, and it shoots the hot air straight under the floorboards. Ah, oh, brilliant. If it's really cold outside, we have to light the, the stoves inside, so there's the cooker and, um, and the wood stove in the middle of the room. So let's go and light the cooker and we can make a cup of tea. I brought one of Matthew's turkeys that was uh, freaking out a bit too much, so it's all, it's all ready to go and tidied up and plucked. Oh, great, no feathers. No feathers, no... Uh, <laughs> Can That'd freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> Can we cook it in your oven? Yeah, come on in, we'll get yeah. it lit. Thank you. So come on in, this is the house. Oh, oh fantastic. Yeah. Oh, look how tall it is. And you heat this whole thing with just wood. Yeah, so there's a, there's a um, combustion um, heater, but also yeah. the, the cooker. Yeah, so that's where you can do your frying. Oh, wow. So this is where the, where the um, fire goes, so you light it in here. Yeah. And uh, if we're going to cook a turkey, we better get it lit 
Yeah, right. smart. Yeah. All right. So we need little bits of kindling, and then we need some some small um, peppermint limbwood to yeah, get the temperature straight up. So um, this is something you're going to have to learn. The trick is in picking the easy ones. Chopping wood. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. Yeah, you've done pretty well there. Yep, that'll be fine. So just Neen reckons for an even heat, I need to get as much fire going in the cooker as possible and then close it right down so the heat circulates evenly. She makes it look easy. Open everything up to maximum. You need to think about what you want from the, from the cooker that day. You know, if what you're wanting is a hot shower, a whole heap of peppermint, you heat up the water in 20 minutes and you can cook nothing, you know? But that, yeah. it just seems like a waste. You know, so it's much nicer on a day when you've actually got the time to be at home, to have the whole rhythm of the day built around what the cooker's doing, you know? Mm. So you've got the water slowly heating while yeah. you've got the stove heating. When you're hot, you can put your, your hot things in, your things that you want to really bake and Sounds bake like you have crisp. to be pretty organised. Like, it's, it's totally different to a modern instant heat yeah. lifestyle, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Like it kind of controls you. <laughs> ah. So we're ready to get the turkey? Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, hour and a half. Yeah, probably hour and a half. She's got a bit of weight to it. This is like uh, basting it from inside, really. <laughs> All I've done is butter under the skin, a bit of sage, and then thyme inside. So I'm hoping the thyme will permeate from the inside. Sage and butter from the outside will give it an uh, extra flavour. Right, ready to go in, I reckon. All right, so we've got a loose hour. Um, we brought the wetsuits. So do you reckon we could get a dive in in, in yeah. an hour, hour and a half? Yeah, let's head down the front and see if we can find some abalone. You can see why Neem would sacrifice modern conveniences like electricity to live a couple of minutes from a beautiful bay like this, teeming with abalone. They're pretty rare and fetch hundreds of dollars a kilo in Asia, but breed well in these cold waters. Tasmanians with a recreational licence can grab up to ten a day, if you know where to look. Look at that. Oh, swag of abalone. I reckon there's eight or nine. One, two, three. We four, might have to five, measure six, a few, though. Eight. It might be undersized. Just next to yeah. That's oh. a thrower. Oh. Oh. Hey, I see that stuff up on the beach. Yeah. Do you reckon that's persolating? Purslane is a crisp and salty succulent that you could eat raw, but I reckon it's much better in a stir fry. What do you know? Tossed in right at the end in a wok, wok full of garlicky abalone. Yeah, beautiful. I reckon it'll go really well. I might book a deck chair for tomorrow if it's going to be this sunny. Back at Neen's house, Nick takes charge. Jesus, what's that? No, it's in case your stir fry doesn't work. I brought the pressure cooker because. I tried to cook a abalone once. I was talking to this um, famous Sydney chef, and he said, "Oh, you, you just take the abalone and you, you leave it in the shell, and you just put it on a really just a lightly warm frying pan. One you can almost put your hand on, and it's cooking really, really lightly." So I did it, and um, you couldn't bloody chew it, and you couldn't eat it. It was awful, and I, I had about 20 people coming for lunch, so <laughs> I, I threw it all in a pressure cooker, and 40 minutes later, it came out, and it was beautiful. I reckon the trick to abalone is. The fresher the best, that you need to do bugger all with it other than to, to tenderise it quite a lot. Nick seems to have everything under control, but I've got the pressure cooker standing by, just in case. Hey! Hey, Nick. Hello, mate. How are you? Hello. Hi, how are you going? Well. Hello. John, this Matthew. is Matthew. How are you? Nice to meet you. How are you going? This Very is how well. Irene really keeps warm. <laughs> 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 You've certainly got the house warm while we've been out. Fantastic. Done better than oh, I've done. It smells fantastic. We're going to quickly cook some abalone, really fast and really simple. Can we, can we get that fire cranking? Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Can you put a wok on it? Yeah, on you this? can. Yeah. You can. So with our stove wok ready, Nick puts together a simple abalone stir fry: garlic, ginger, baby red onions, and some of Ross's super spicy sambal. Oh, the pesto! Where's the pesto? We're going to throw that in right at the end? Yeah, I don't think that's going to need any cooking to it. I reckon just punch your leaves off. Yeah, all right. Okay. Get it fresh, smash it hard, and cook it fast over a raging flame. That's Nick's secret to tender abalone. What's going on with this turkey? Just cooked, you reckon? Hopefully. Oh, it's cooked perfectly. Yeah, look at that, it's still juicy. It's not dry at all. Like, if that was a, if that was a commercial turkey, that'd be buggered. Mm. Yeah, I'll have wouldn't it? You want to throw them in? I reckon this will need just a stir through. Beautiful. Good. 
Absolutely brilliant. I love it. Jesus. A ginger was You're good. Oh, really? You're good. Oh, thank you. So good, in fact, that we didn't need my pressure cooker after all and can dish up juicy roast turkey and tender abalone for Nina and her friends and family. Pleasure. Thank you. What a treat. Hey, it's brilliant. While you, while you guys were out fishing today, got abalone, mm-hmm. and I was mining the turkey, I, I've popped this little loaf of bread in that. Oh, good. You baked that yourself. I made that today. Are you a baker? Uh, no. No, <laughs> anybody can do this. Yeah? <laughs> mm. Without a bread machine. Mmm. Mm. This is just brilliant. Abalone, learning how to use the cooker for the turkey. I'm just so inspired to get home and actually um, give it a go myself, see if I can cook something that looks as good as this. Thank you. Mm. I love the spices you put in that, that's fantastic. Mm, beautiful. Turkey's got so much flavour. Mm. I'm a turkey convert. I reckon the days are numbered for those other four you've got there. I reckon he might be right. Do the next one, Matthew? Um, I don't want to, but I think I probably would like to. Back home, and I'm up early to face a new challenge. One I'm definitely not looking forward to. None of the animals seem to like me today. The dog's not talking to me. The chickens aren't happy. Look at these beautiful things. Four months after I've got them there plumage is up. They started crowing. Uh, one thing I do know is that chickens don't crow and roosters don't lay eggs. So it turns out I've actually got four chickens and six roosters. So uh, today's the day that five of the roosters will actually um, go to God. I've never actually um, killed an animal before. Uh, so Jen's coming around and I've asked if uh, her and a friend can come around and give me moral support and, and show me how to kill my first chicken. I got my pigs from Jen. She's a former vegetarian who only wants her family to eat ethically farmed meat. And that means rearing it and killing it herself. She's bringing Colette, a friend who shares this philosophy, to show me how to deal humanely with my surplus roosters. Can you hand some stuff out? Yeah. So this is the, the cone, what do you call it, the cone of silence or the cone of... <laughs> We tend to call it the killing <laughs> cone. Killing the killing cone. cone. Yeah, but basically that's what it is, isn't it, really? Um, but yeah, I think cone of silence sounds a bit nice. <laughs> a nice name for it. So, how does it actually work? Well, we get the, the chicken and it gets placed um, upside down, like his head comes out the bottom. Yeah. And this way the body is enclosed in the cone. So it can't flap. So it can't flap around, and also it gives you good controlled access to the bird's neck mm. so you can't make any mistakes. Yeah. We both make sure that we do it the best possible way. Minimum risk of the bird suffering. Wow, you're so huge. Colette has brought a few of her chooks along and I'm glad they're going first. So what we do, you have to hold them firmly by the legs, under the legs, and right down. And then they put upside down. And his head comes out the bottom, can you see? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, all that movement, it is all involuntary flapping. And it's not nice, is it? No. There's no nice way of doing it. Yeah. But that's the, that's the quickest, most instant way that we've found. Yeah. This is fairly ordinary, the whole experience of watching the, the bird moving involuntarily. I guess, I mean, we... All animals, I think, do that, but I think that's the old chicken with its head cut off kind of cliche. When you actually see it happen, is um, is quite brutal. One. One bucket will do a couple. Yeah. And you'll get the feeling for this as to whether you've dunked it for long enough and see how the feathers oh, okay. come off really easily. Off so we just get stuck in and. Wow. And you get together normally to. Yeah, we never yeah. don't do it on our own. Is that? That's a. Practical reasons pra- Practical or... and, su- and emotional support. <laughs> Most people would throw away the feet, but I'll hang on to them for a sticky stock. And the liver's for a pate. I want to use as much of the birds as I can. Do you want to do the next one, Matthew? Um, I don't want to, but I think I probably would like to. <laughs> That's it. That's it, and then you've got better hold of him too. Sure. And I'll... Okay. Let's see. Oh, 
that's it. Right. That's it. Yeah. Got it. This feels quite personal because this one was one of my roosters, one that I've raised since it was a week old. I mean, they, they lived in the house for you know, nearly two months, picked up and cared for, and this is the reality of farming, I guess, that, that lots of the boy animals just don't make it. They're, if they can't breed, uh, in the case of chickens, if they can't lay eggs, then they become meat. <laughs> we eat a chicken a fortnight, our family. That means, and, and we don't buy meat, so that means I have to kill 26 chickens a year. And when you actually start killing your chickens and actually realise what that means, and you actually associate it with a real animal, it's a big it's difference. Just a big difference. <laughs> That was one of the toughest things I've ever done. You'll do. But someone has to do this for every animal we eat. I don't know that I'll ever find it easy. After that experience, it's a relief to be back in the veggie garden. I'd love to cook Jen and Colette a dish to thank them for their help, using my veggies and one of the roosters. Despite Neen's expert advice, I'm still struggling to get an even heat in my cooker. But this won't matter for the dish I've got in mind. Fingers crossed. I actually want to cook it so it uh, retains some moisture, but then try and crisp the skin. I'm just going to get all these bits of chicken into the dish. And then I'm going to do some uh, carrots, potatoes, those onions. This will melt down to pretty much nothing in the pan. And the potato sort of rounds it out. It means you don't actually have to bake some potatoes or do anything separate. You can just throw it all in the one pot. A bit of pepper. And then that time of day. Well, when I was in France a couple of years ago, they actually gave me the comb from, from the chicken and they said it's really good in your cockamam. That's one of the reasons why you have a rooster. So I'm going to, even though I've put this in the oven, I'm going to pull it out and give it a try. I reckon I'll leave that for about an hour, then whip off the foil to brown for a few minutes before the girls arrive. Ready for us? Yeah, good timing, actually. Oh, well, that looks good. Looks amazing. How do you feel about eating it so soon after it's been a spat? Mm. I was actually really dreading it, mm. especially when we were out there. I was thinking, oh, the last thing I want to do today is cook, you know, come in and prepare it. But when I got into the kitchen, it was so removed from mm. from being out there, at, you know, with the killing cone that I actually found it relatively easy to cook. Mm. Uh, the secret ingredient was was the cone. Now, when did you cut the cone? Um, after you'd gone. It looks like a bit of octopus. I was about to say that, yeah. It'd tentacles. probably be pretty chewy. Go on, Matthew. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Go on, Matthew. Oh, it's been on your fork now. Oh, that's all right. Oh, great. It's Thank you. It's pretty <laughs> <in spice. Well. laughs> You're tricking us into idiot. Good. Is it? Yeah. It's pretty satisfying, isn't it? I may not have completely mastered the cooker just yet, but I do reckon I'm learning. What a day that was. I had to kill my first chicken, which was pretty awful, but you know, I got to fire up the cooker and cook my first great full meal, and it was stonkingly good. And now I've got a bucket loads of hot water, so I can actually have a shower. So that's next. Next time, come on, Maggie. Hey! I learned to milk my new cow, Maggie, by trial and error. You've got to be quick. Get some much-needed advice. You don't need to do anything, you know. No medication, no nothing. From an inspirational organic dairy farmer, and take a trip to stunning Cradle Mountain, where Nick treats me to my favourite dish. You don't like fondue. I think there's a reason why I died a death after 1973.